Hello and welcome. Over the last few weeks, we've had our bucket of experiences filled with rides in the mountains. We've kept an eye on the MotoGP season that's taking a midway break. We've also made a short trip to Coimbatore to speak to some racers. All that and more on this episode of Beyond Pit Stop. Keep your enthusiast engines running for the next half an hour. But before all that, there was a whole lot of action from the world of launches. Hot new vehicles headed your way. Here's the download on all of that in our first segment, Power Bulletin. Mercedes-Benz commemorated the global success of its performance brand AMG by launching the all-new Mercedes-AMG GLC 43 4Matic Coupe. The awe-inspiring SUV Coupe embodies superlative driving performance, agility and stays true to the legacy of AMG. The GLC 43 AMG gets the sloping roofline akin to the larger GLE Coupe or the C-Class Coupe and features the distinctive horizontally placed tail lamps, which is the signature style of all the Mercedes cars. The SUV also gets a new set of bumpers with a large air intake, sportier stance up front and a large built-in diffuser in the rear. The SUV is powered by a 3.0-liter bi-turbo V6 engine that makes 362 bhp of peak power and 520 newton meter of torque. The top speed is electronically limited up to 250 km per hour. The engine is mated to the 9-speed 9G Tronic gearbox. GLC offers three driving modes, Echo, Comfort, Sport and also Sport Plus. The interior sports black and red leather upholstery with electronically adjustable front seats. Other equipment highlights are the Command online infotainment system with 8.4 inch display, ambient lighting, thermatic automatic climate control and 360 degree parking camera. The AMG GLC has no competition in India yet and the SUV offers comparatively compact SUV dimensions, very similar to what you get on the larger GLE 43 Coupe. You can own the newly launched Mercedes SUV at a price of 74.8 lakh Indian rupees. Indian motorcycle manufacturer Bajaj Auto surprised enthusiasts 10 years back after it announced its partnership with the Austrian maker of crazy motorcycles, KTM. 10 years hence and the results of the partnership have changed the Indian motorcycling landscape with the entry of the Duke and RC models manufactured in Zakan, Maharashtra for the world. The duo recently introduced even more exciting news with the announcement of the production of Husqvarna branded motorcycles in India from 2018. KTM had acquired the Scandinavian brand known for its motocross heritage and unique design ideas way back in 2013 from Bavarian bike maker BMW. Ready in the works are the Wittpillen 401, Swartpillen 401 and Wittpillen 701 models based on existing KTM platforms. The initial lots of the motorcycles will be built in Austria, but production of the 401 models is expected to be moved to the Tsakan factory in India in 2018. The two 401 motorcycles are based on KTM's 390 platform, which are already being made in India and exported around the world. The Wittpillen 401, Swedish for white arrow, and the Swartpillen 401, meaning black arrow, have been developed as suave, chic motorcycles and seem to be a good exercise in platform sharing, with vastly differing appeals from KTM's Duke range, also meant for the streets. Production in India almost guarantees that the motorcycles will go on sale locally next year, and that's great news for enthusiasts.
a bike teaser starting with the words, We do not just build motorcycles, we engineer emotions. Sounds very good, doesn't it? We do not just build motorcycles, we engineer emotions. We can imagine almost every motorcycle manufacturer saying the same thing or at least wanting to. The president and CEO of MV Augusta says so. We have every reason to believe him. Here's why. He is it's a completely different company from anybody else. I mean, we are driven by the objective to deliver something that always has a wow effect. Whenever we do a product, it has to be something that, wow, it's completely different. And we run by that, we're driven by that, and we are fully committed to do that. So for the next years, we see in our pipeline always models that look forward. The RBS concept is, is fully developed in the CRC, so we put together the best guys that we have there, agent, a senior designer, and all the best engineers who developed something completely unique. MV Agusta officially unveiled the RVS-1, which is the first bike from the new RVS division. RVS stands for Reparto Vecoli Speciali, which in English translates to Special Vehicle Operations. The motorcycle has an intimidating aesthetic and some serious engineering that makes it much more than just an appearance package. A very interesting aspect about the MV Agusta RVS is the lighting. It has an adaptive headlight along with a pair of LED spotlights on the right-hand side which are controlled by a dedicated switch. Different parts of the adaptive headlight turn on and off based on the speed and tilt of the bike, so it lights up the correct part of the road based on your riding. There's substance behind all the glitter too. Engine-wise, it's the expected 800cc triple in 150 brake horsepower Euro 4 legal form. The chassis is pure Dragster 802, as is most of the bodywork. Despite adding bits to the bike, its weight has been reduced by 8 kg, which sounds promising in terms of performance. Each one also comes with a race kit comprising a titanium exhaust, quick release fuel filler, race ECU, and various carbon and titanium bolt on goodies, all in a branded wooden box that will look lovely sitting in anyone's garage. The MV Agusta RVS1 is a prototype at the moment, but given that it's based on an existing production motorcycle, it should be fairly easy for MV Agusta to put this into production as well. But until it hits the market, let's just enjoy the look and the sound of the MV Agusta RVS1. There's even more action from the world of automobiles on the other side. We're slipping into a quick commercial break. Join us there. Welcome back to V on Pit Stop, your weekly window into the world of automobiles. Let's head to our next segment, it's called Cruise. edition of We on Pit Stop, we gave you an insight into one of the most extreme motorcycle rides known to humankind, the Himalayan Odyssey. We took you through the treacherous routes which takes riders across three mountain ranges, six passes including two of the highest in the world, Khartungla at 18,380 feet and Taglangla at 17,582 feet. We 
we discuss the importance of mental and physical fitness and why being one with the motorcycle is so important before a trip like your Desi. The Royal Enfield Himalayan Odyssey has always known to bring some of the best people together. And rightly so. And this week, we bring you inspiring stories of such people who have managed to break stereotypes. People who have fought their own battles to reach where they have today. Here are some of the most celebrated moments of the 2017 Himalayan Odyssey. Usually, the first two days of the Himalayan Odyssey are not the most interesting ones. The bikers start off from Delhi and they ride till Chandigarh. The highways are mostly good, open, wide roads. And boy, the bikers who swear by the tough riding regime of the Enfield aren't really a fan of the first two days. The beauty uh, ahead of this, uh, once you reach Kulu or probably further on Kulu or when you're approaching Manali, and the old Manali scenes uh, are like really to look forward to. So I think uh, everyone is quite excited and uh, the hardship is over. So Delhi Chandigarh, Chandigarh Manali, the heat and the traffic. So hardships are over. Now it's just something to look forward to. So we all are excited. Uh, Himalayan Odyssey 2017, Royal Enfield. Cheers. As put by Rajat, the real fun or so to say, the real Odyssey starts from Chandigarh. The distance from Chandigarh to Manali is around 310 kilometers, and the route offers a good mix of clean road and off-roading. The ride emphasizes on harmony with the terrain while at the same time encouraging one to overcome their personal barriers and realize the potential that lies within them. So after Chandigarh, when we crossed Roper and uh, we started inclining on Swargat, so that's a Best feeling we get because you see the board of Welcome to Himachal, you know, that's a biker's gateway to heaven. So yeah, that gives an immense feeling of happiness when you see a board which says Welcome to Himachal, Himachal me aapka swagat hai. Royal Enfield starts his career from so long back, it has so legacy in his brand and strength and power of machines. So, the Royal Enfield is specially made for Himalayas, like when they started the, building the machines. So that's why they, it feels like it's very close to Himalayas. Even Royal, you say Royal Enfield, you never other thought you'll be coming in your mind is Himalayas. This particular edition of the Odyssey had 61 motorcyclists, which also included six women riders. One such woman rider was Anwar Dhyangi, a 51-year-old banker from the city of Chennai who chose not to listen to the misogynistic advice given to her and decided to do the 2400 kilometer epic trip. Biking I started after marriage and I want to give a few credit to my husband who initiated me into bullet. I was, well I was 27 then. Now it is uh, over 25 years that I've been riding a bullet. At a time when our lives have come to be defined by our professional selves, the Himalayan Odyssey appeals to the free-spirited motorcycle rider in oneself and the quintessential seeker of life beyond busy cities and concrete jungles. And for this time I waited like near, near around nine years to go come to the HO and explore this region. So it's just amazing. I, I used to think I'm a more of a long rider, but I discovered with this Odyssey that I'm more of an off-track guy, you know, so more of off-roading and stuff like that. So that is a new evolution in me which I just discovered. So that was really nice. Before the Triumph or the Benele or the Harley came into existence in India. So I would suggest that obviously Enfield is the classic bike to ride to Himalayas. And regarding the brotherhood, if you ask me, then I would say you get to know new people from different scenarios, you know, and it's good to explore with them, make friends and enjoy the ride and be a friend for lifetime and maybe they, as we know that uh, we can ride for HO only once in lifetime. So maybe next time we all can get together and ride again with ourselves. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. The 
2017 Royal Enfield Himalayan Odyssey is an experience of a lifetime. We all dream of life experiences that we would wish to have, worthy of being told and shared, and a chance to live them out to our utter contentment. There is never anything better than living life on your own terms, doing what you love and pushing the extremes of discovery. Live it, relive it, love each moment. But that should never be the end. It should always be the beginning of the next. There's always more to life than this. There's always more to everything we ever thought exists. There's always more with a Royal Enfield. You're going to have to slip into a quick commercial break. We'll be back before you know it. Stay with us. Welcome back to V on Pit Stop, your weekly window into the world of automobiles. We are now heading into our next segment from the world of motorsport. It's called Final Lap. The 2017 MotoGP season has reached its midway point and the first half as of yet has proved to be an absolutely cracking setup for the season. The outstanding aspect from the sports point of view has been the utter lack of domination any team or rider has been able to exhibit. Unlikely heroes, gutsy performances, tempers, tantrums and all the drama. Here's us looking back at the season thus far and getting to the top stories that have emerged as of now, on and off the track, on and between race weekends. The top two riders in the championship as of now are separated by just five points. Maverick Vinales and Marc Marquez have shared alternating fortunes through the nine races thus far, which has resulted in no clear lead for either rider. Both young and both ultra-talented, the fight between Marc Marquez and Maverick Vinales was supposed to be square this season. And while the points tally says exactly that, the two have not finished together on the podium yet. In fact, the two haven't even shared a decent scuffle in a race this season. Marquez entered the season as the reigning world champ, Vinales with tons of promise after his podium performances on the Suzuki machine last season. With what arguably is the best bike on the grid this season, Vinales took the season opener at Qatar by storm, establishing his stake to the championship. Both riders have had victories, podiums and forgettable results to this point. And it will be a question of which rider remains composed to the end of the season that may decide the outcome of this wafer-thin margin. The old fox has not lost his nick, as has been amply clear in the first half of this season. Valentino Rossi may have racked up just one win yet at the Dutch Grand Prix, but consistent top 5 performances and wily skill around younger riders has brought him within 10 points of the championship lead at the midway point. Rossi has been a part of some great fights already this season, and one can say he has been its soul, thrilling fans and team people alike. Had it not been for the uncharacteristic crash at the very last lap of the French Grand Prix, 
As the doctor battled teammate Vinales fair and square, the texture of the championship may have been very different, with Rossi much closer to a dominant position. It is risky to assign the underdog status to the seven-time world champion at any point, but his lurking position at fourth in the championship is only adding to the mix to make the championship more complex, unpredictable and interesting. Erf Moncharal's satellite Yamaha team is currently fourth in the championship, miles ahead of any other satellite team and only 33 points behind the factory Ducati team this season. This probably is the most consistent performance from a satellite team in a long while and riders Johan Zarco and Jonas Folger have been responsible in no small measure. The season started promisingly as Zarco showed ominous pace on the old but familiar Yamaha M1 at the Qatar Grand Prix. Five top five finishes later, he has shown that he has the talent to dice it out at the front with the factory boys. His most memorable performance coming with his second place finish at his home Grand Prix at Le Mans. Teammate Jonas Folger has not shown that kind of form, but he recently pitched in with a brilliant second place finish at his home Grand Prix at the Saxon Ring. All in all, the Tech 3 squad is looking like a well oiled machine, making do with what resources they have and shining bright enough to make it to our list of mid season talking points. The Italian factory has had reason to cheer at one end thanks to consistent performances from veteran rider Andrea Dovizioso and many reasons to frown at the other end where ex-MotoGP champ Jorge Lorenzo seems to be struggling with the Desmo Sedici GP17 machine. While Dovi is sitting snug in third place at the championship, Lorenzo is languishing at the end of the field in ninth place, not becoming of his stature or that of his Italian factory. It has got to hurt having even the satellite Ducati of Danilo Petrucci ahead in the championship by one point. Dovizioso has been diplomatic enough to brush aside a championship challenge, but clearly the man has a way of making that handful of a race machine go very fast around the racetrack and is sure to add drama to the season as a major character. While Lorenzo has been critical of naysayers after his podium finish at the Spanish Grand Prix, his overall lack of feel for the Ducati is sure to make the large investment on his fees difficult to justify for the Italian factory. The remaining nine races of the season are on circuits known to have very different stop-go characteristics compared to the classic fast and flowing races in the first half of the season. It will be interesting to look out for Rossi at the Australian GP and the performance of the Yamahas at the Austrian and Malaysian circuits. All in all, this is one MotoGP season you cannot afford to miss out on. If you have missed the action of the first half, we hope you stay with us here on Beyond Pit Stop as we keep our eyes trained on all the action from the remainder of this cracker of a season. That's all we have for you on this week's episode of Beyond Pit Stop. Our show is changing form. If you like it or dislike it, please let us know on these social media platforms or we'd love to hear from you on email. This is your host Sopan Sharma signing off. I'll see you in seven days time. Until then, keep those engines running.